My guest today could have easily been a, a race driver. The way he stepped on the pedal and zoomed away to seven milestones, I don't think anyone else could have done. The fact that he decided to be a spinner is a different thing. Welcome to Spin Talks, Ravi Ashwin. Fastest to 50, fastest to 100, fastest to 150, fastest to 200, 250, 300, 350. I think you could have easily passed off as a, as a Formula One driver there, Ash. Fortunately or unfortunately, I do not have a fetish for speed. So thankfully, <laughs> I'm not one. I don't know. I think I'm a little, uh, honestly, I'm a little skeptical about the thrill for speed. So I'd stick to cricket. I'm happy with wherever I've achieved, whatever I've achieved so far. Uh, but it's a game that I'm really passionate about and I'm very thankful that whatever records came by, came by. Yeah, but it's, it's unbelievable. Can you imagine? You're the fastest Indian to all these milestones. And imagine, we've had a huge lineage and a rich tradition of spinners uh, from the time uh, this game came into being in India. So it's just a special feat, isn't it? Coming And again, South of India, we've always had spinners. Don't you feel somewhere down the line, possibly once you reflect on your career, Seven milestones. It's not one. So the consistency is there. And also, just seven out of them. All seven going to you. See, look, I, I don't know if, if, it's a, if it's a great time to be uh, speculating or comparing uh, spin across eras. I think a lot of pundits over the years have managed to do that quite successfully in terms of uh, trying to compare people from different, uh, you know, different times and try and say who's the best. Because it's clearly an opinion-related uh, issue. Because... Uh, let's say someone elder than me would have watched a lot of uh, someone like a Bishan Bedi, someone like an Era Pali Prasanna, uh, today is being his birthday, uh, and uh, B.S. Chandrasekhar and so on and so forth. Uh, these were the original match winners that India were accustomed to seeing in the early days. So naturally, someone from the past would like to say that they were the best. But this whole comparison of who's better across eras, I think, is a little miscued. Because uh, in, in, my, in my opinion, uh, things change. Uh, even if you look at how a man has evolved over the period of time, they came from an ape and then evolved into a human being. So, I naturally think people coming after us are going to definitely be better than us. And uh, even these records are just a standstill. And I'm very sure around the corner, there is somebody else who will take over these records if Test Cricket survives the distance. Yeah, that, that's a big if. But again, I'm, I'm not, I've never been one for comparison at all. For me, it was just uh, looking at things and I just felt, oh, this must be a special feeling. That seven different milestones, he's been the fastest Indian. If I would, in a, in a small way, throwing humility out of the window, I'll feel special that, oh, I, I did achieve these things. I, I probably didn't address the crux of it. I, I, I think I can just rephrase a little bit. It's, it's in fact, uh, in, uh, with all due credit to all those great spinners in the past and in the contemporary and in the recent past, are, are all in certain ways responsible for what I've managed to achieve today. Uh, because they've left behind a rich legacy. And... When you, yeah. when you leave behind a rich legacy, you're chasing something that's of the highest pedigree. You know, for example, someone off late, the, the most sought after uh, comparison between uh, Rishabh coming in into MS's shoes. Uh, very highly spoken of, uh, constantly compared. And we are comparing two people who are one at the start of the career and the other one who's accomplished almost everything that there is to be accomplished. Uh, likewise, somebody taking after MS Dhoni is bound to follow his footsteps and be better than a keeper from the past. Likewise, a spinner coming from all those rich legacy of spinners in the, in the cupboard. Uh, I am naturally entitled to be chasing that sort of excellence and pedigree they have left behind. So, everybody is responsible for where we take off and move on and leave the milestone. At. Yeah, very true. I think it's, it's people you emulate and want to emulate. And since you're talking about it, whom did you want to be? Because uh, you've, you've, uh, it's a self-confessed uh, statement from you that you, want, you were an opener before you turned to off-spin. How did that happen and who were your role models growing up? Uh, see, I'm, if I may address you as Karthik, sorry. Uh, That's but, fine. So, for me, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's been... Forget the Anna bit for now. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, uh, if you had to take, for instance, uh, how my career panned out, I'm, I'm quite frenzied thinking about it at this point of time because... I was, I, was about, I was about 17, 18. I played for Under-17 India, went to the NCA, came out as one of the very successful batsmen. I made hundreds even in the NCA, inter-NCA games and people were talking about how my batting was coming through and all of a sudden, uh, in a year or two, I was playing uh, as an off-spinner for Ranji Trophy, uh, for Tamil Nadu, which is, uh, yeah. which is something that was quite a turnaround. And in, in so many ways, I think 
the kind of innovations i try the kind of monkeying around i do with my actions with my delivery stride with with the way the ball comes out the variations i think i would attribute all of these things uh, for becoming a bowler much later in my career than becoming earlier because okay. i was so inquisitive about the skill because the time i had was such such a limited span of time because i started late and within about being i, I won't say i didn't bowl but i was bowling from 16 years of age of uh, you know proper off spin but uh, but this 18 to about 20 years uh, 20 when i played for ranji trophy I, it was a very short span of time i picked up massive wickets uh, then suddenly i played ranji trophy i had a great year and it was so quick i had to make the transition quickly and hence i had to search for answers quickly as well so you won't put any you won't say that there was a particular uh, role model or a, or a particular spin guru to look up to where where was really the time uh, uh, karthik because for me i i enjoyed watching anil kumble and harbhajan singh i loved them because i was a batsman when i was watching them in the two, i mean watching harbhajan in the 2001 series and much later i became you know in 2008 i did understand 2007 8 i did understand spin bowling a little bit more but i was still you know uh, making the transition from a ranji trophy cricketer to an ipl cricketer uh, i i used to enjoy how anil bai came back from injuries and how he you know innovated himself brought the googly much later into his career raked in a lot of wickets in australia all these things were admirable qualities but i had to rely upon myself about watching okay. someone uh, learning from it and try to adapt in my action in fact that's one of the reasons why uh, you might see that i'm changing actions because i feel when i change actions i get a certain amount of benefit out of it and if i can like couple things together and all these sort of crazy thinking if people don't understand it understand it it becomes crazy but if people do then they can probably resonate with what i'm saying so role models and inspiration yes but modeling behind someone not really yeah, it's a, it's a different it's a different uh, thought process which you've always had ashwin and the reason why i say that and we had this chat in jamaica if i'm not mistaken uh, during a series um i've always wondered and i said this to you then and i'm going to ask you because it's a different show it's my show um we were, we were always told that you need to have an action and it needs to be a simple repeatable action and that's what it is so people who used to change and you're the only second person whom i know i don't know whether you know of this cricketer who was my batchmate called sonu sharma who played for haryana and uh, he played for india haryana and indian airlines or air india he remembered all his actions he used to remember all his actions and i'm pretty sure you would remember all your actions how many have you changed and how many have do you remember there so for us it was always about maintaining one action so when you change or when any old school spinner is always going to say why is ashwin changing so many actions this was working so well so why is ashwin suddenly stopping why is he got a different sort of a, a load up and he's suddenly backing away suddenly in between you also said that i'm going to uh, possibly flex my arm till the till the permitted uh, degrees as well so everybody is always going to question because you were thinking different for many of us keeping one action was a big thing remember manindra singh he lost his action he lost his bowling so that's where it comes from see i have i have uh, i mean to start off because you ended there and just taking off from there uh, when you when you speak about uh, manindra singh who you you speak very highly of uh, i have seen his action i have seen his bowling when he gets his action right he's unplayable literally unplayable i have seen his videos and we are talking about some stalwarts of spin here so i'll have to be very careful in what sort of a line i tread here uh, so i i happen to come across this individual in a completely different walk of field very early on in my life i i did go through a you know a decently a decently good academic upbringing and i'm sure you're aware of the schools i think you studied there as well so uh, when i was encountering one of these conversations that we were having and he was actually delivering a speech and he said there is no success there is no formula for success uh let's say if you if you're doing math 1 plus 1 is 2 right but he says there is no success formula in life because if you happen to uh, take a particular road and go to a destination that's a success formula for that day but tomorrow if you tread the same road and there is rain and a tree has fallen you cannot just bash your head against it and say i will go through this road because you won't get to your destination so i understood that failure is the first step to success in a literal way because if i don't fail i will not find an alternate route to succeed so success cannot be the same because there are going to be cricketers that are that you play in in a game there are 22 players that play so do you yep. think the rest of the 21 will come and give the same answers to the questions i pose every single day 
and go back defeated? Oh, well, no, I don't think so. Because in this day and age, with the kind of video footage that's available and the zeal for excellence different professional athletes have, it's completely different. And if you go back in time, in the 80s or in the 70s, the game was a lot more amateurish. Uh, when I call it amateurish, I'm saying it, was, it had... Re, it, people were playing it for the love and passion of it. They were not mm. literally in it to make a career, right? And now when you're looking mm. at it as a career and the options it, there is in front of you, people are going to go travel that extra mile. You know, you, you see people hiring coaches, hiring bowlers to bat, doing all sorts of different things within their domain. But why not actually tap into your own resolve? Why, if you can't remember your own actions, we, it's, see, we walk, we run, we jog. Do we remember walking because we jog? Do we forget, do we forget jogging because we run faster? We don't. It's very similar. I think the space of the mind is confined to certain walks of life and hence we put a limit on ourselves. But they always say, why fix something which ain't broken? So it, you have to be a gutsy guy. No, I'm saying because you spoke about professional career. And profession, in professional career, there are lots of pitfalls. You're always being chased by somebody. Because if Ravi Chandran Ashwin needs to be replaced, there are 14 others who want to come and play in that spot. So that thought process, absolutely. Failure is what is going to lead you to success. But sometimes when something's working for you, and that too at the international level, it was not as if you had to struggle at international level. You came in, you were man of the match, man of the series. And in fact, seven man of the series. I don't know whether you know that or not. You're the only one who has maximum number of man of the series. So once that happens, a person is always thinking, I have got this. I belong here because I've done well at international level. So I'll improve upon it rather than change action. It's a mindset. I'm not saying if you have to have that mindset, people who have played before you are always going to say, we hope, it's out of your care that we hope Ashwin doesn't lose that action. I, I, will, I will just segmentize, I mean, compartmentalize your question because the answer is there in your question, Karthi. You, you told me that I'm the seven, I, I have seven man of the series, right? And you ask me why fix when something isn't broken. Having been man of the series on seven occasions and the highest, none of the people who have lesser man of the series than me, five, six, and all the stalwarts of the game, lost their place in the team when they were playing through their career. But right. I have lost my places at different stages right. of my career on having right. one bad game or one bad innings. So yeah. what does it tell me, Karthik? And it's not, it's not like... This is a sequentially treated, uh, you know, sort of a thing. It's not like I saw this and changed. This is how bowlers are treated all through their lives and careers. Be it first class cricket, be it school cricket, be it collegiate cricket, bowlers are treated the same way. And captains yeah. tend to, you know, even when I was playing, when I was playing a college game, I remember playing a college game and one of my seniors, when we were bowling, I was bowling, I was, you know, getting into the zone and, I, I tossed a couple of balls in the first over. I went for a six and a four. And he didn't bowl me for the 30 overs of the game. <laughs> and I had played under-17 India and I was in under-19 South Zone highest wicket taker that year. Hmm. And my God, it felt like somebody picked up a whip and gave one behind my ass. Sorry for the language, but that's how I that felt. Uh, but that's how I felt. And these are lessons that some people forget to hear. Uh, there are people, there are people who, who take these lessons and say, you know what, the captain, he's against me. He is going after me. Hey, no, that's not how it works. You, you can take it harsh upon yourself and say, okay, you know what? I gave a six and the four and he cut me from give me, getting me an opportunity to get a wicket. So might as well learn from this. So every decision and every change I've made in my life is only learnings from the past and how my DNA has been suggested. And now to get to the flip side, why fix something that isn't broken is a much more simpler answer. If I had fixed and if I had failed, I can live with it. I will not lose okay. sleep over it. But if I've not fixed it and fallen short of excellence, I can't sleep with it. So it's basically me coming to terms with my own mind. Yeah, it's a, it's a good trait. And I, I do realize that you're a fellow Virgoan. So they have that uh, bit of a, uh, what should I say, fetish for perfection and trying to get it right all the time and constantly trying to recalibrate and reinvent. I completely uh, agree with you on that and on that uh, aspect as well. Ash, uh, you, you, I'm glad you mentioned that because, again, we said fastest to 350. And sometimes when I wonder, uh, you've missed games through injuries and you've been benched for whatever reason, you know, getting there. Can you imagine um, how, how does that affect you mentally? I'm not talking about the game, but sometimes every one of us, and you, you rightly said, man of the series, maximum number, 
you seen as this match winner which india has right now or whichever team has i'm not saying india i'm not going there but sometimes why bench somebody and you feel that what goes through a spinner's mind since we are talking spin we are only going to relate to that what goes through a spinner's mind who's a successful spinner it's not as if you have failed and you've been benched you've been successful in your bench you know you know people tend to tread, uh, talk about it in a very different genre than how i take it uh, a lot of okay. people in the past have come to me and asked hey why are you not playing uh, is there something wrong have you fought with the coach have you fought with the captain what's happened and that's people ask me that question because i voice my opinion okay i talk to people i'm not afraid of asking questions but the point here is i'm equally sensible as well when somebody is left me out of the team it could be at the back of one failing game or it could be at the back of somebody else bowling better in the net or something like that so i listen to these noises and say okay there is room for improvement here i fail some people you know you know you know kartik i i find this very very interesting in life uh, everybody is time bound in life okay some people some people are time bound in the hour, in, in hours some people are time bound in days some people are time bound in years but if i sit down and say you know what i have been labeled at the back of one innings that's a negative input is that i give to myself but if i turn around and say you know what i failed i couldn't deliver for my team so might as well do it the next time i get on the park this is exactly how i see life and this is exactly how i see my cricket so things have been far more simpler and far more excellent for me when i've turned out on the field and for me it's never personal i can i can move away from the ground and i can have a conversation i could i could have a disagreement with a captain or a coach but i can move away from it and completely be normal when things are over because all i'm looking at is to address the issue and not address the person interesting interesting uh look we, from the conversation we've had so far it's, it's quite clear that there, there's quite a bit of your off spin which is self thought obviously you've looked up to people but it is quite a bit of it is self thought and you're constantly rediscovering reinventing yourself so from that point of view what is what are the what are the mechanics for you in spin according to you we're not going by what the book says we're not going by what the purist says we're not going by what the traditionalist say for ashwin what works for him if since you also have coaching centers what would you teach young spinners see i mean for uh, if if we are going to go by the book i am not the person you should be talking to very clearly no no i'm saying since you don't go by the so book we are not going by the book yeah, yeah so a book and me are completely opposites especially when it comes to my skill but uh, see i i i i i i i have i have certain being extremely aware of what i do uh i might not be doing the right thing by someone or i might not be doing the right thing as far as the skill goes but when i do something it's it's very uh, it's very process oriented if i if i let's say i press the button a i know what the result of a button would be so let's say i change my loading position i will i would have done it so many times that i know exactly what result it will give me so i break my bowling into very very small blocks i've got this theory of uh, gearing mechanism rhythm and alignment and because once once i get these three aspects correct the ball at the other end will, will do the, what job it needs to do because I, i i might not be making the right decision of delivering a particular ball but if i decide i need to deliver that ball i should have all the repertoire with me at this side of the crease to be able to deliver it that is all i work upon for me it's about uh, it's about working on this half of the crease i take the i take the other half of the crease uh, for granted because all i can control is this and i will control it to the best of my abilities when i say gearing system rhythm and alignment uh, all these things things are uh, intertwined uh, when i say gearing system how much momentum i gather uh, what sort of speed when do i accelerate when do i decelerate and jump when do i land my connection point connection point to the floor and the release point from my hand all these things are subconsciously trained and i only look forward to that so so you gear so you gearing gear mechanism gearing mechanism means uh, the momentum or the 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 run up is that what you mean by gearing mechanism the momentum the momentum and the rhythm together that's what i call by gearing mechanism yeah and how would you define rhythm what is rhythm for you so uh, for me uh, the rhythm is to be able to get at the crease in the best possible balanced manner uh, so okay. if i am jumping and if i cannot control at the jump if i cannot control my left hand and the right hand together then i am not in proper rhythm so for that that's exactly why i go back to the factor of saying gearing mechanism so there are optimal speeds for every gear right so if you if you take and drive a bike a manual bike every gear has a certain speed if you don't achieve if you achieve that speed then the the vehicle sort of pulls you back right it just it's not smooth 
So once you achieve that gear, it's important to move on to the next gear without allowing any sort of friction. That's why we see it. Interesting. Um, as a spinner, we, are, we were always told that your front arm is a very important aspect. And since you're not by the book, what does the front arm do for you? What, how would you uh, relate to your gearing mechanism and the rhythm? Because at the end of the day, you're the one who's loading up with that arm and it follows through and all that. So how would you describe that uh, from your point of view? So I use the front arm for both my line and length. Okay. Uh, I don't know how, how other people use it. But I have this concept which is uh, very, very simple. Watch, teach and reach. Uh, so I watch with my eyes. I teach my left hand to direct me. Basically, my left hand is my director, director of operations. And then I use my right hand to, you know, reach for the target. And this is how I, these are the three facets of the, and these three philosophies are, are very much a part of Gen Next Create Institute as well. And this is what we teach kids that come out there as well. And that's because it's come from right from my theory of books. Because if I can, if I can control my left hand and have it firm enough, that is my front arm. Uh, I know I can guarantee myself line. And if I can control the drop of the left hand, then it means I'm in top rhythm. I can control the length yeah. as well. Yeah, 100%. That's exactly what we were taught. It's just that um, from a point of view of the lead arm, um, I was always taught by the great Bishan Bedi and Mananda Singh that the lead arm is always the one which controls everything. It's the, the bowling arm is just the follow-up arm. And I was always told that this lead arm should always be slower and the bowling arm is quicker. That's where you create the illusion. That's where the ball drops. That's where you get the drop from it because this is slower. This is controlled. The lead arm, which is the right arm for me, and the bowling arm is much quicker. Uh, for me, personally, I, I've never had an issue. I never thought of my lead arm as the length arm. For me, it was always the, the director. As you rightly said, it was the director. Uh, a change of length was at will because of the practice you put in. And that's what I've always felt. That uh, I heard something which was interesting. I cut snippets of it when you and Sanjay were talking. And that is something which I've been trying to tell lots of spinners. People think that in white ball cricket, especially T20 cricket, which I'm going to speak to you about, lots of people think that the finger spinners can't change their length. We can change lengths at will. And that is where you're going to get avoid being hit. There is a small difference. Though. The wrist spinners can vary length without their own knowledge. That's the yeah, biggest advantage. Correct. correct. Correct, hundred percent. That I completely agree with you. They they don't know. That's possibly why most of the current uh, lead or uh, current leg spinners aren't doing well in Test cricket because it's the times of the Shane Warnes and the Stuart McGills have gone because they were so accurate. They had the skill. I don't know whether you agree with me. They had the skill and they could bowl 30, 40 overs at that same spot and create those variations. But right now, if you have a forward short leg and a silly point. You can't be constantly having a deep point and a deep mid wicket for ranked bad balls, which you can have in T20 cricket. Of course, I mean, in T20 cricket, it's completely different, right? Uh, a lot of people, uh, there's one theory that just goes over my head all the time in T20 cricket that people talk about you should look to get wickets. Nobody gets wickets in T20. Uh, it's only the illusion of pressure that's created and the best defensive balls that you can bowl that fetch you wickets in T20 cricket. So, that logic is a little bit of a you know, rusty line that I, I would call. Uh, but I mean, it's great. I mean, from a broadcasting language, it makes sense. But for me... No, as, as you say that, I'm constantly, I don't know whether you've heard me, and commentary, I'm constantly asking all the people who are sitting with me, you, why, how can you loosely say looking to get wickets? Please tell me how. In Test Match Cricket, I've got four slips. I've got a silly point short leg. I have got more than... I come for one over, one over later, one over... Who am I trapping? Who am I setting? I'm not, I don't even know which batsman I'm going to bowl. Too. So, how do you say, look to get wickets? I don't understand that concept. See, uh, I think, I think uh, they, the loose state, loose, I mean, so to say it's loose in the air because we're not picking the right logic here. Uh, but in T20 cricket, the best way to pick wickets is to be extremely uh, deceptive. Uh, if you've got more variations, you have a better chance of getting a miscued shot. Uh, the wickets are so good that it's like basically a scale being drawn and the ball just comes on with it. So, any deviation of the pitch is not, uh, is not ideal. So, if you can like get the ball to move in the air, like spin, spin, drop in the air, change of line. Change of line and change of length is at most important at this point of time in T20 cricket. Uh, but yeah. even then, I think sometimes change in length uh, goes farther for a bigger six than, you know, change in line. So, when I, when I started playing T20 cricket first up, the, predominantly if you change length, the miscues used to go to the fielders. But... I think the bat, uh, the bat manufacturing companies have made sure that it's not going up in the air anymore and it's sailing into the stands. 
uh, the bat, the, the way they make the bats, the, how the ground sizes are brought in. Because from the first IPL uh, till today, I remember the, sta- the you know the sponsorship boards coming in five yards and the skirting yeah. taking over, and there is another six yards eaten into the ground. So some of the grounds are ridiculously small as it is. So uh, to ask for a spinner to have the courage to toss a ball, it's just not on. No. And captains, no. captains cannot live with it. Like. Uh, they would much rather say that you, you know, a bowl a short ball or like a yorker or a wide ball and probably go for a single or an edged boundary rather than looking to get a wicket and then trading it for a six. That cannot happen in T20 uh, today, Karthik. Because it's, no, it the, margin, the margins are so little, you know, because the overs are so less. In a 20-over game, an ordinary side can actually come closer to a, you know, a good side. It doesn't matter if you've got A.B. De Villiers, Brian Lara, Sachin Nilkar, Virat, all in the same side. Only two of them might be batting on a particular day. So, it doesn't really matter. The teams come closer and hence the margin of defeats are so close. So, you can't trade with that. Yeah, especially for a spin, I completely agree with you. Because it's not, nobody is going to give you marks for beating the batsman in the air. But the ball has gone 20 rows behind. But whereas, if you can pull a shit delivery or a rank bat delivery, caught at deep mid-wicket or caught at long on. And people say that's a wicket-taking delivery. So, I completely agree. So, you have to try and figure it out. And that's why. Ash, you, you've been a very thinking bowler. So, you speak about these changes of length, which, are, which, can, which, are, which a finger spinner can do very easily if he's, he's screwed up there. So, for you, is second guessing or preempting what the batsman going to do a big part of your bowling? Uh, for me, preempting is not so much on the ground. Preempting is uh, well before the, ma- uh, before the match starts. Uh, okay. In fact, when it comes to the IPL, there are very, very large teams that are available. Uh, teams, I mean, not teams, teams. Uh, in, in, the, in the sense that uh, a, bat and, uh, a batsman, for example, just starts the tournament in a way where he's left off the previous season. Uh, so, you can have trends in the way he will approach his batting. And likewise, later half of the tournament has a massive impact with respect to how the tournament's gone for that particular batsman. Right? I, can, I, can, I, can, I mean, there are a few examples that I know of. When, when for example, Suresh Rana bats, uh, his biggest release shot against an off-spinner is over extra cover. And even, even over extra cover, he doesn't go across much for, a, for an off-spinner. And uh, even in the recent Insta Live that we did, he spoke about this in a very brief moment. So, every time I see him, I put a deep extra cover in place first. It doesn't matter if it seems defensive. He can just knock it through covers for a single. But I do not want to take a chance. He's a good batsman. The pitches are good. And if he knocks me over, he's sticking. You know, now he's changing everything. But I put the ball back in his court and ask for an answer, which which I do get many occasions. That's the day you get a wicket in T20, not, not by saying, you know, put a slip. In fact, I remember one game against uh, KKR a uh, long time ago, in a uh, long time, meaning like five, six years ago. It was a Champions League game. And uh, Robin Uthapa was playing for KKR. And he was reverse sweeping very well. Okay? Yeah. And uh, I think wicket had fallen and MS asked, MS asked me to put a slip in place. And I said, no, I won't want a slip. He will reverse sweep me. Uh, and he said, no, no, let him take the chance. But the back end of it is, he actually reverse whipped it and went wide of slip for a four. So now, there are, there are two sides to the coin here. Some people might say, okay, he took a chance and it came off. It's all right. Just put the fielder back now and get on with it. But no, I bowled a ball and I've gone for a boundary. I'm chasing five balls of the over now. Instead of getting a dot ball at him or probably giving a single away, it's very important to stay ahead of the game when it comes to T20 cricket. If you're ahead of the game, the batsman will make mistakes. If the batsman is ahead of the game, you will make mistakes. So, it's always yeah, better that you are… So, that, that's exactly what I meant. When I said that, say, if you're bowling to me, I'm just giving you an example. Uh, or Hayden or whoever, I'm just giving you an example. So, you know that these are certain trend, trends. As you said, Ravi Suresh Raina playing inside out. For me, Robin Uthapa, as soon as he came, if he defended a few balls, you know that he had to try and play. Because he was not very good using his feet. He was a good slot sweeper or a, or a, or a reverse sweeper. Robin hit that of the first ball that he faced. Okay. 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 And, and on another occasion, I'm sorry, I'm just bringing this up. On another occasion, I was having a great tournament and Robin, Rob, I've got at Robin many times in the IPL. And I remember MS, he put a slip and he put a leg slip. He didn't have a short fine leg. And I said, no, no, I don't want a, I don't want a leg slip. Put him at short fine leg. He said, no, no, Bindas Dal. I bowled and Robin looked to lap me over that leg slip fielder and got bowled. You know, I mean, it, it all comes in, in the balance of saying what works or what doesn't work. Yeah, 100%. So, for me, Robin has gotten out three or four times, three times in IPL, playing the same shot, playing the same reverse sweep. Reverse sweep, okay. As soon as he comes in. So, you know, there are certain people whom you have this. So, 
for for Matthew Hayden, as I say, a deep midwicket and a deep spell leg is a catching area. It's it's right. it's an attacking area. If you take that out, you are actually binding yourself and gagging yourself and say, "Come hit me." So from that point of view, I always felt, which I've seen uh, with your bowling as well, uh, that preempting. I feel, I personally feel, I don't know how people agree with it. In T20, I've been a big, huge, uh, what should I say, anti-social element when people say. Um, Oh, you look to get wickets. I'm, I says, I'm really sorry. If I can go for 24 runs in my four overs, if all five bowlers think like that, you're only going to be chasing 120. I know it's not going to go that way because somebody might go for 35, somebody might go for 45, somebody might go for 15. But you make up for it. But to loosely say I'm going to look to get wickets, I've never understood. I always felt that two people bowling in tandem, you create the pressure for somebody to get a wicket. It's in fact changed five people bowling in tandem, or maybe six, because you don't get to bowl like three or four over spells. Correct. It's correct. Not. So what I'm saying is just creating the pressure. What I was trying to allude to was creating the pressure is what is going to get you wickets. Um, anyways, we have we have died. since you are on the topic again. You you bowled in the power play. You bowled. How has the the white ball format changed for you? Two new balls. People thought that it's going to help the bowlers. Actually, it's gone against the bowlers because imagine. Um, Again, one fielder less as well. Sometimes when I'm commentating, I feel so sad sitting from up that poor guy doesn't have, he doesn't know whether to keep a deep midwicket or a deep square leg. You have to keep that man in between. Because it's like that kind of a, how, how have you evolved? In spite of that, you've got a wonderful economy rate right, in every format. So how have you adapted to it? See, look, uh, I, in fact, I, I lost my place in the limited overs format and uh, I actually became better as a bowler. Uh, because... Okay. Uh, when these with these five fielder rules, it's important that you're able to hit different lengths and different lines at different speeds. So basically, looking to hit different lengths and different speeds in different lines, uh, these are three things that need to come together and with different variations also sometimes. Bowling the carom ball, bowling the googly, bowling the reverse carom, the off break, then the undercutter. You need to bring it all in play, right? Because you're used to you're used to used to a certain set of pattern where you can bowl the off break, the undercutter, then the carom ball with four fielders inside the circle. But all of a sudden, the fifth commodity coming in. Uh, now, if I have to bring sweeper cover in for a right-hander from my perspective and the opposite for you, um, the batsman knows that I can't err on line. He knows I can't give him any width. So, basically, he aligns himself to a certain line and he can play an attacking shot. So, basically, that pushes the spinner on the back foot and it gives a certain amount of idea to the batsman that the bowler cannot bluff. Right? Hmm. So, if I have to bring one of my straight fielders up, let's say the mid-off for me, then the batsman now knows that I can't err on length, right? Because he knows that I will always look to drag the length back because the mid-off is up. So now he's 100%. going to wait on the back foot. So these are like, uh, this is basically like people who are not able to pick spin. Uh, you are basically giving them a guiding hand saying, you know what, the ball could be here and thereabouts. Just take a free dip at me. Hmm. So that's, uh, and I definitely feel that's why risk spinners have come into the game so much. So I... I went away and thought about it and said, okay, I can replicate this. I can bring more variations into play such that the batsmen are going to find it difficult, which is exactly what I did in the last two IPLs. The last IPL, I got the ball to come back into the right-hander in the air and also bowl the reverse carom, which kept the batsman guessing. I could basically hurry the batsman for pace at the same time, hit lengths that were not a step hit. So these are mandatory requirements for a spinner. Like you said, if you're aware and if you can do it day in and day out, you need to develop everything around it. But if you're a spinner that errs on the chance, you know, for example, somebody looking to bowl a good length ball and ending up yorking the batsman, which happens a lot with the leg spinners of the modern era. If you see yeah, the yeah. series when India and Australia were playing, a lot of times batsmen were castled because they are pretty much expecting a certain length. The bowler also tries it, but it ends up going a little fuller. You know, yeah. this happens, yeah. this journey I discovered because I have done it as an off spinner and then later as a leg spinner also. So I know that it is not an intentional error. It's an error that happens automatically which provides that variable. Yeah, it does. It does. So, so many times that happens. You touched upon the fact that um, having been or not playing one day cricket or not playing white ball cricket for India has made you a better bowl. Why, why would you do that? How, how? It just pushed me to a corner where I need to explore myself, right? So, okay. uh, it, it just said, okay, uh, you, you, you're you not there. I mean, let's. I, I don't want to get into, there are a lot of things that you can shed light on and say, hey, this was not right, this was not right, I can feel cussed about it, but there's no point. I don't have time for that. 